Originally, we based our target audience on our own knowledge, as our act, Faithless, is a well-known band across the UK. We already had an idea of our primary and secondary target audience. We believe that Insomnia was a well-known song, therefore our primary target audience is target 15 to 24. Our secondary target audience is age 25 to 40. Carrying on our research on YouTube as a start-up task, we found a lot from this immediately as there is a target audience for our primary target audience, but this is also highlighted to us that there was a secondary audience as well. To begin with, we were sceptical about our decision of our primary and secondary audience because we thought that the app would be more suited to an all the audience as the primary audience has faithless originated in the early 90s. However, the feedback we got from YouTube comments didn't lead us to change our minds. Another feature I found relatively useful was to look at Faithless live performances and to look at the audience members attending the concerts. This was useful too as we could roughly work out the age of the audiences attending. This matched up to our primary and secondary target audience perfectly as there was a mix between the two at Faithless's live performances. I started by showing a potential primary audience some pictures of our artist. These are the pictures shown. I decided to show a variety of pictures of our artist, Faithless, and asked people whether they knew who this was. If my target audience didn't know who the person was in the pictures, I would then show them the track that we would be using. Right. So, do you know who that is, Rose? No. No. Yeah, it's uh, Faithless. No. Crap. No. Do you own or stream anything by this track, by this act? Yeah. Uh, what would you expect to see in their videos? Um, I don't know. Dark themed video? From that picture, yeah. Yeah. What about now? Yeah. Who's that? Yeah, Faithless. No. Thank you. Do you know this song? No, sorry. I don't want to guess, get to get it wrong. Just guess, just guess. <laughs> uh, Snoop Dogg. We created a range of sample sequences, five in total, and told them the idea of what we were going to do for this video and that gave them a taste of what it was going to be like. One of the questions we asked was, do you think this idea is appropriate for our target audience? The feedback was that it was suitable because of the idea and the fact that the main character fits in the age range of our primary target audience so they can relate to the character. We also were planning to incorporate a nightclub scene in our original idea, which our target audience seemed fond of. However, we didn't include the nightclub scene in our final draft because it was unconvincing and unrealistic. But we also agreed that the music was suited to our target audience because the track was well known. On the contrary, one person did say that the audience could be stretched to an older audience profile because uh, their parents would be familiar with this genre of music and the act itself. Which is why we have a secondary target audience. Another question we asked our audience was any thoughts on how we could utilise the tools of social media? The majority said Facebook was a key tool, especially for people who have a lot of followers. Therefore, we could reach a wider audience base and it gives a possibility of a viral aspect. We were able to gain feedback from our sample sequences, which was a good as it required little time as we made five we got a good range of feedback. I gained feedback from five peers on the sequences through all of the audio and the clips were muted. The feedback boiled down to both positive and negative. The positives were the track itself was good, black and white filter was effective, the effects used example the uh, time lapse on the chair was also effective. The negatives were 
the lip syncing was out of time in some sample sequences and some of the scenes had no relevance to the overall theme. The audience feedback from this was useful as we knew what to do and what not to do when it came to creating our records. It also gave us heads up on what we had planned to shoot as we could change this accordingly and save time. One of the key pieces that arise from our audience feedback was our nightmare scenes. We originally had a masked the character and this was very unconvincing and didn't fit in with the style of our music video at all, which is what we were told. We were therefore changed the idea completely to a, comp to a little girl which, which gave the text feral similitude as well as Stuart Hall's preferred reading, which is what we hoped for. So the feedback was very useful as it allowed us to change our character and know that it was what our audience would prefer. Age, gender, ethnicity, sexuality, nationality and class were not an issue in the nature of our feedback we received in terms of content. Girls were usually more hesitant to speak on camera and were very camera shy. Most of the feedback we got was from our peers from our primary target audience. The feedback was good but wasn't very thorough. Compared to the feedback we got from our fellow students and teachers, their feedback was a lot more precise than the general feedback we received. It was good to use a range of both general and educated feedback as we could act upon the little things as well as things that a normal viewer may not see, such as slight glitch in the camera movement. And out of a total of 33 people, I asked a number of different questions. The first one was, do you recognise the track? which went down really well, as 27 people did. However, 15 of these said they would put it on their iPod, so that's roughly about 50%, which is good, so our primary target audience do like the song. Uh, in terms of the narrative, it was split 50-50 between easy to follow and the audience getting some of it, and then no one opted for the don't understand it option, which was good. So everyone could follow the video. Also, 28 people said it would suit a 15 plus audience, which is exactly what we wanted from our primary target audience. When it comes to the more open-ended questions, we asked what the viewers liked and what they disliked about the song and one of the key occurring themes were the effects and editing which a lot of people really liked which was good because we did try hard with that also the black and white effect was very well liked a lot of people liked that um, in terms of disliked some people thought it was a bit repetitive, which I can see in some of the scenes, but it's hard to change the narrative to fix that. We will have to see what we can do. Also, the uh, floating heads at the start on the green screen, that occurred as a regular dislike, which we will have to act upon. And also, the video is slowing at the end, so it loses pace, which is, I agree with that, and we should act upon that and not lose the emphasis that has been gaining through the video. Uh, the suggestions we got were more dance scenes, and dance scenes I would say no to, because I just don't think it would fit in with the theme of the video at all. And also less aggression. And for the aggression, that's... It's kind of what our character has to do, so there's not much we can do about that. But this audience feedback we will act upon and make a further rough cut.